coming up on City Spotlight. We're back on location in Arcola. We'll first talk with Arcola City Administrator Bill Wagner about public works in Arcola and the latest economic development in Arcola, including the new Dollar General Market. Then we talk Arcola Schools with Arcola Schools Superintendent Dr. Tom Mulligan about staffing changes within the Arcola School District, community partnerships between Arcola Schools and the City of Arcola, and Tom's thoughts on the recent Arcola football game dubbed the Gear Bowl. We're talking all things Arcola here on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location as we continue the start of Season 10, and we are back in a familiar spot, Arcola City Hall, as we are talking Arcola for two segments in this episode. And to help us out in this first segment, we welcome back a familiar guest to the program, Bill Wagner, our Cola City Administrator. Bill, pleasure as always. Hi, thanks for having us on today. Excellent. Great, great to be back here in Arcola talking with Bill. We'll talk Arcola Schools in our second segment. I uh, was hoping to have uh, Mayor Garza with us, but got a little tied up, so we'll catch Jesus at another time. But Bill will fill us in on what's been transpiring in Arcola. Last talk with you and Jesus uh, two years ago at the 50th Broom Corn Festival. And, uh, just want to get your thoughts, Bill, on uh, Jesus. Uh, when I interviewed him for the first time two years ago, he had just been stepped into the mayor's chair. Uh, I would probably guess he's probably pretty comfortable now after two years. Yeah, he's uh, he's very embraced of uh, the position in, in the, the community as well. Um, he's got an open door policy. People, you know, track him down at work or um, out of events, and you know, if they they have something to bring to the table or uh, good or bad, they let him know. And it's been good. We've been able to work on some things. He's really been. Uh, passionate about helping people address street lights in the community. We've added a number of lights with Ameren um, LED lights. So he's been working primarily on the, the west side of town. They've added quite a few around the school and just improved a lot of neighborhoods over there. Okay, very good. Uh, one thing I was going to ask Jesus about because I saw through the uh, social media channels, uh, he uh, had a, a really good run at the broom souping contest at the recent 52nd Arcola Broom Corn Festival. But Bill, give us a summary. How did it all go a couple weeks back? Uh, we had a great crowd Friday and Saturday, uh, good entertainment on Sunday, of course the food vendors knocked it out of the park. Uh, it's just a good down-home festival, I think there's over 150 entries in the, the parade, you know, three marching bands this year, Altamont, Mattoon, and of course the, the Pride okay. of the Prairie, Arcola was nice. in it as well, nice. so it was yeah. uh, very well received. It had a lot of local politicians, uh, you know, that were involved typically, but we also had Susanna Mendoza, the comptroller, join us for the parade, so we're very proud of that. She marched with Mayor Garza and his family. I remember fondly uh, two years ago uh, taping with you and Jesus there on the stage there in downtown Arcola and then taping that 50th Broom Corn Festival. It was an absolute gem of a, of a, of a time. Uh, Bill, you kind of, you know, you're, you're all hands on things transpiring in the city. Uh, it's been, we're taping here again, uh, we're taping actually here uh, the end of uh, September 2023. When Broom Corn is all done, uh, maybe not specific numbers, but uh, do you see how many people roughly came and, and the financial impact that Broomcorn has on the city? Because it is, it is the big event in Arcola every year. It's, it's, a, it's a big finale for our summer. Uh, we see a lot of traffic. Our hotels are just jammed full. The campgrounds jammed full. Um, there's a lot of spillover in local communities. Uh, for example, they brought back, Cast Productions brought back the plays in Arthur at the Penn Station. Uh, her events were overflowing with people that weekend. Uh, knock on wood it was great weather all weekend yeah uh, people had a great time they like being a part of it so it's it's nice to have that as our you know fall kick off in their homecoming i guess very good thank you for that uh update and and how uh, the recent most recent broom corn went the 52nd edition in arcola uh last time we talked bill uh you, you mentioned uh in public works let's shift our gears to public works 
and you were telling us about how the splash pad was going to be put in at Moore Park. Obviously, it's been two years, and you said it would be put the next year, which would make it about a year old. Um, how how does that work out for Moore Park and the community? Uh, we had a little bit of a delay, so we didn't get open until uh, May, and uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of growing pains there in June. Uh, our issues with the surface, we. We stuck our neck out, tried to get a little more grippy surface, and it didn't work out with the contractor that we had. So uh, we patched it up as best we could to make it through the summer run. We're going to strip the surface down here in the next couple weeks, put a whole new uh, raised quartz surface on it, so it'll be super gripped up like your your swimming pool would be, your public swimming pool. So yes, um, just outthought ourselves on that that model, trying to be safer for the kids, and we uh, we just misfired, but we got it corrected. Uh, worked well with our general contractor, and he's fully supporting us and actually paying for the. The corrective work they they wore that badge of shame with us as well all summer so that's unfortunate that you've had a few hiccups along the way but maybe reemphasize to our audience at home why that was an important move to put that in your rather large park more park well it's a central gathering place we don't have a pool um, and so it's nice to have a cool weather water feature uh, mm -hmm. for the kids it's all access it's all one level all abilities can access it from your your littlest kids to your you know your teenagers um, uh, my special needs son's autistic. He just loved it. I mean, he ran around that thing like a wild man all summer. It was great, <laughs> great for my family personally, and, right. and, and met a lot of other good families like that um, that have kids that have sensory issues, and they had something on each feature that their kid could enjoy. So, it, like I said, it touched people of all access and all abilities. So, it's a, a great feature for our community. It's going to be a huge asset going forward. Sounds like uh, in the early stages, it's achieved what you you yeah. wanted it to. Very good. Any other public works you could highlight that you've uh, had happen here in Arcola in 2023? Uh, we're right now working on Shrock Drive. Um, they're going to expand the Jack Flash gas station out there um, and add another diesel island. So we're getting a lot more truck traffic overnight there. And it was just an old trip street need to be, um, you know, made into a truck grade route through there. So right. we got some local funds uh, committed to that. And we also got a grant from the state of Illinois for truck access. So um, that project is going to be done here in the next couple weeks. So it's been a little bit of a hiccup, but uh, a much needed improvement there. I did say, see that on the way in here today into Arcola. You also mentioned off the top about Jesus and, and the lights, so that I guess that would be considered public works as well. Absolutely. Um, Aaron's been a great partner for us um, in working through um, that program with us. Last summer they gave us a grant to replace all of the uh, sodium vapor lights, the old style lights with LED, and then we've been adding LED lights then to the the missing spaces, so to speak, so um, where we can find a pole with good access and and uh, in need, we've been adding lights slowly but surely. So it's been it's been a good addition, um, and they're really efficient. So honestly, our, our electric bill is going down a little bit because they're LED versus the old old style. Uh, and the old style would cast out a, a broader light, so we're finding that the LED is very focused, so right. it leaves a lot of gaps in your coverage. So we, like I said, we're filling those in. Uh, little by little where we can start on the west side of town I think people will notice a big improvement there and we'll slowly work our way through town you know we can only take so much of Aaron's ass assets and allocation of LED lights so. absolutely and you know, said so west side of town you mentioned at the beginning of the interview uh, over by the schools absolutely the school has been our primary focus and like I said we're working our way slowly um, back into the central part of town gonna start somewhere very good and just want to get a comment on how the, the solar on the south end of town has been working for our call because it was kind of getting going there the last time I talked with you. Yeah, it's been a, a great community solar project. Um, it's It got in a little bit early, and so I don't know how many people actually signed up for it, but uh, you know, community solar is a big thing coming on right now. There's a lot more of those developments in the area, and I think people are becoming more and more aware of them, so uh, maybe the next group of, of those that are coming out will get people to sign on. I know Herba helps a lot of people with the LIHEAP program from the state with the energy assistance, and they've been working to sign people up with uh, one of the other local community solar projects. So. Um, it's, a, it's a good asset for the community. Very good. All right, from public works to economic development, and as I was driving in uh, to downtown Arcola today, a very noticeable, the new Dollar General Market. It's not your traditional Dollar General, and it just got going here in Arcola. Absolutely. It's been a, a huge impact for our community. Um, they have expanded uh, freezer and grocery section. You can get fresh produce, uh, fresh meat. Um, it's a good quality product. Um, that they're putting out, which surprised me. Um, you know, I think Dollar General gets a negative stigma, but the DG Market is a is a top tier program. Uh, they source their groceries like anybody else, and they're um, getting a good staff in there and keeping everything fresh and in stock. And uh, 
their first weekend on a Saturday, uh, the regional manager shared with uh, Jesus and I that a uh, typical Saturday on a really good Saturday was $6,000. Their first Saturday in our call with the DG market was $16,000. So that's a just a massive number. Just a little bit of success there. Yeah. So they had to you know reinforce their their stocks with additional trucks in the next few days after their grand their soft opening, but it really was a grand opening for the community. So. Well, it's something brand new, and everyone wanted to see. So hopefully, continue steady success. I saw a lot of cars in the parking lot it's as I busy. as I drove by. Always busy. Yeah. Very good. Uh, other economic development you can share with us uh, that's new to our call out here in 2023? Uh, we're getting a lot of activity downtown. Uh, for a number of years, we had some what I would call zombie properties. They just uh, vacant due to ownership or getting caught in um, you know back taxes or whatever. So there's just no activity there. Uh, we've been very successful. We've got a couple uh, of local people, uh, Jose Cantu and Juan Martinez, have been buying several of those buildings and getting those back into productive use, and then. Uh, we have a gentleman from Peoria that is affiliated with the John Deere facility going into Mattoon. Oh. Um, that's bought a couple of buildings that he's going to use for uh, staffing purposes here. And then uh, he's looking to re rehab one of those into a, to a rental. So um, long vacant properties, getting back into production downtown has been huge for us. And then that supports our existing local businesses as well. Uh, had Bill on probably 10, almost 10 times here on City Spotlight in 10 seasons. and. It's been kind of neat uh, through this program to see, uh, uh, even back to that first episode where I talked with you and, and Larry Ferguson at the time of, of the downtown and how it has kind of evolved and you know things did go away, but I did, I did notice some new front signs and, and it's, it's cool to see the development in the downtown area. And it drives interest, you know, people want to be a part of something that's successful and they see activity and movement and they want to be back involved in our downtown, which is, which is a very important aspect of our community. So. Bill, anything else you'd like to share with us here as uh, you're, you're in the latter half of the calendar year 2023? What are some other things that you're you're looking at toward the end of this year or even maybe projects that you have uh, in the works for 2024? Yeah, so uh, next year is shaping up to be really big. We did get a, a grant for our downtown through the Main Street uh, Rebuild Program from DCEO at the state level. Uh, we we'll are redoing our sidewalks. Uh, we're going to replace the water main downtown. The water main was originally built in the early 1900s. It was hand dug in, if you can imagine that. Wow. Um, so we've got our useful life out of that and a lot of lead lines going into some of our older businesses. So we'll get those all replaced, put in new plastic and make that you know high flowing. We'll have better accessible uh, sidewalks for people. The ADA standards have changed in the last 30 years. So we'll get that, that current and uh, make it something that's a little more presentable for broom corn and some of the other things coming down. Uh, we also got a road project going for Lidman's. Uh, we started that originally in 2018 right. and got what I would call our first phase done. Um, phase two, we'll get this wrapped around the building and uh, make that a nice concrete street for the trucks that are right. generally going through the residential area at this point. So, yeah. Um, just a couple of big projects for us. A lot of, unfortunately, things just gotten really expensive. So, I mean, they're. Hey. They're small as an area, but big in, in cost. Yeah. So. Everything costs something, whether it's a little or a lot, and as you know, yeah. it can all add up. Getting caught up with the latest going on in the city of Arcola with Bill Wagner, Arcola City Administrator. We, we look forward to having Bill on again, and Jesus Garza, Mayor Jesus Garza down the road. Bill, pleasure as always. All right, thanks for having us today. Thank you very much. Coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll continue talking to Arcola, talking to Arcola Schools with Dr. Tom Mulligan. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Arcola. Here on City Spotlight, this new episode on Arcola here in season 10, the start of season 10. We continue taping here at Arcola City Hall. And to help us out in this segment, we welcome back a familiar face, Dr. Tom Mulligan, Superintendent of Arcola Schools. Tom, great to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Had taught Tom on probably 10 times here in 10 <laughs> seasons of City Spotlight. I've, I've lost count, but it's great yeah. to be back talking with Tom. Uh, we have taped in this spot here in City Hall with Tom during the early parts of COVID. So we We've taped everywhere with you, Tom. Yes, we have. We've done it a lot. So regardless of location, <laughs> it's great to have Tom on again. We're about a little over a month at the start of the school year. How's the 2023-24 school year going? Yeah, it's been an amazing start to the school year. We uh, have um, a lot of new, new changes going on, um, a lot of exciting things going on. We've got 
kind of a new administrative team. I've kind of gone through several retirements over the last couple oh. of years, so I've kind of got a whole new mm -hmm. administrative team now um, in different roles and responsibilities. So it's been it's been a really exciting time for us. And and that's kind of something I don't think you've really had to talk about when we've when we've we've said that yeah, yeah, all about for, the students for years. Program. Yeah, so, right. So, so I've been here for that. you know I've been here in the district ten years, and for a lot of those years I had the same very veteran administrative team and then um, our last our elementary principal she was the third one to resign of the core group there okay. and uh, retire last year and so I've got um, our assistant principal at the elementary school she moved up to the principalship okay. we hired a new assistant Nick Lindsay who used to be our AD he's up at the principal now and we've got Amber Barons is our, our new assistant she's been with us two years okay. and um, uh, she really brings a, a great perspective for us. She's bilingual, which is something that's in critical our goal, that's in our whole community. Yeah. So it's been really, really nice to have that. So yeah, they're all um, fairly young administrative team, except for me, of course. I'm a little, little seasoned. So are you having um, to with with these newer faces? Although some of it are people that have are already here, right? Have, have less of a transition, less of you kind of guiding them, graded new positions, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. New positions. I I think it's you know that's been a, a big part of my role the last couple of years is kind of mentoring the new new administrators okay. and kind of getting that team mm -hmm. to gel. You know. I mean, I think that. You know, it's 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 that whole stare down process, right? Like, you've got to have a great school board that takes care of the administrators. You got to have a synergistic administrative team that takes care of the teachers. And if the teachers and all those things are going well, the kids are taken care of, and that's ultimately what you want. Pyramid or however you want. To yeah, and and if and if you have a breakdown anywhere in that, things struggle. I mean, and kids suffer. Yeah. So you know, I think that's really important part of the superintendent's role. Okay, thank you for that update on that yeah, sure. and uh, meshing with your folks in their new positions. Something we've talked about with Tom probably every time here on City Spotlight is uh, facility work. And uh, in recent years, uh, you've had some significant work uh, yeah. at the elementary side. Right. It's obviously done. And, and how, how are the folks on the elementary side of the schools in utilizing the uh, yeah. upgraded facilities? It, it's amazing what a, a new facility can do for climate in the building from not only students but staff and just the it just you know we we added we did a huge remodel added a beautiful office and conference rooms and mm -hmm. and several smaller classrooms um so yeah it's been it's been really nice to have that is the newer edition so if you're watching city spotlight for the first time and you're seeing this episode on arcola all students in Arcola basically go in one, one, concept, one location, yeah, kind of one, one campus. One location. Obviously, the elementary school is the newer building. Right. And so now that you've upgraded the uh, elementary school, your attention is probably always on the facilities at one time or another. Right. So what's the next facility thing that we might yeah, be looking so for? We're, we're kind of looking at a couple of new renovations. So our, our high school, so original high school was like 1917. We had the 100 year anniversary That's a few right. years ago. Wow. And in our, our gym area, it was more like around the 1950s. And um, mm -hmm. our locker room just really needs some, you know, those locker rooms have been there for 75 years. And those, that kind of a renovation project is something that we really need. It's not seen by a lot of people, a lot of visiting students. Right. But it is, it's one of those areas that just really needs some attention. And it's not an easy area to get to. You got to get under, it's underneath the gym and those yeah. kinds of things. So we're looking at that renovation. We've got some roof work. We've got to, we've got to redo our track, a whole new track we're going to be looking at this summer. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the main projects we're looking at. Not too long ago, you had those renovations, the new locker room for football. Right. Uh, the last time that we talked, May of 2022, you were talking about the ball diamond at, yeah, at Moore Park. Right, yeah. So you're giving a little bit of love to all the athletic areas. Yeah, we, we really are. And the, the ball diamond project was amazing because we did that in partnership with the city of Arcola. And mm -hmm. we worked really close And because uh, they own that facility we use that facility it's a city park it's a city park and um, so we really did an incredible renovation there bill wagner did a phenomenal job working with us so that's been that's been great and and you know the that's the one of the that's the one thing i love about Acola is this it is a such a close connected community that we all work together 
for for the benefit of the community. So. And let's follow up on that because one of your focuses the last time we talked was about again the partnerships, Arcola schools, the community, and that's right. something that you have really stressed over the ten seasons that we've we've done these episodes and and talked to Arcola. Um, just how important, again, is, Tom, for all these partnerships that you have, City of Arcola, Arcola Schools? I think it's critical. And, you know, we're, we're one of the smaller schools that we have not been forced to co-op and, you know, do those kinds of right. things. And, and as in a smaller community, community, you have to work closely together to really develop services and programs and resources and, and provide things that are going to continue to grow our community. And I think that's a huge part of my role as, as superintendent. I work with a core community and the group, and we, we've been working um, really hard at establishing, uh, we're, we're moving into hopefully to do some sort of an early childhood center, daycare center. We right. Daycare is desperately needed in, in the community. So we've, we've created a whole new organization, a new not-for-profit that's, that's gonna be working on early childhood. And I'm working really closely with that group because there's a lot of crossover connections with the school you got before and after school daycare program, right. you got the daycare. Um, you know, we, we see it every day. We've got, we've got, we desperately need great teachers and we've got teachers who have little kids and they struggle with daycare and, you know, it's a, it's not just a school, it's Libman's, all the, the workforce in our area, you right. know, it's one of those things that really would attract employees here in the community. So it's very important. Your, your point about, uh, not having to co-op, uh, I, I now work, uh, some high school sports in the basketball and football arena on, on the radio. And you're at the conference that Arcola competes in. Pretty much every school yeah, in that conference yeah. has a hyphen. Yeah, they do. Almost and Arcola all. is just Arcola. Yeah, we're, we're really proud of that. Very good. Uh, speaking of Arcola football and sports, a pretty cool event happened. I call it an event because it looked yeah. like it wasn't just a game but an event. It was. Uh, a recent Arcola <laughs> football game. Uh, Arcola and Villa Grove, so two Douglas County schools uh, right. competing against each other. And it was dubbed the Gear Bowl. The so, gear bowl. Well, folks at home, the Gear Bowl. Tell us <laughs> all that transpired. Well, I think that I think that I think this is another example of our community because this this Gear Bowl wasn't just driven by the school and the football program it was driven by community members right. and the Gear Brothers, which there's a highway named after them right and over let's, here. And let's, let's be honest, Dorva, there's a lot of gears. There are a lot of gears. In the general area. I know yeah, there's more than there's just Willow Grove. Yeah, the a whole lot of gears, gears in the area. And I think, I mean, originally, I think they had like 17 children I or read something. that. And, um, so several of the, the, they all went to the war t at the same time. There were seven brothers. Right. And one did not come back. The others came back. And they've got huge descendants of families. And so... They, they had an incredible football tradition here in Arcola, and then one of the Gear brothers went and became a Hall of Fame coach at Villa Grove, mm -hmm. and they've There's got somebody on staff that that um, is currently coaching that's a descendant, and so we kind of coordinated and worked together and um, had an unbelievable um, celebration of the Gear family. We had, I don't know how many of the descendants. The photos I saw on was, Facebook, which hopefully we'll be able to share lot. while we're talking about yeah. this. Uh, it wasn't just a football game. There was a lot of pomp and circumstance. There was, and it wasn't just right about celebrating football. It was about celebrating their service to the, not only community, service to the military. Obviously the name, so family. Yeah, and we had, we had um, you know, the, they, they landed a Black Hawk on our practice Saw football that. field. Wow. They, they were there, there was, and then another helicopter, and they, they sat from like three to seven, and everybody in the community, from both communities, came. They were sitting. I mean, it was just, it was just an incredible event. And any, anything that you know, the, we've gotten to. You know, the, the tradition and the rivalries are there, but the world's getting smaller. And like yes. our, the kids from Villa Grove know our kids from Arcola, and Absolutely. anything we can do to continue to grow those partnerships, right. you know, I think it's. It just gives another bit of excitement to that Villa Grove Arcola rivalry moving forward. If we talk more sports here on City Spotlight, I could talk all day about <laughs> how important rivalries are and to keep those yeah. traditions going. They so are. it's great that Arcola and Villa yeah, Grove, absolutely. same county, can still uh, compete and play against each other. And and the field and the road one thirty three there right. it got an, an honorary honor honorary uh, gear. Yeah, very good. So. 
In our last couple of minutes, Tom, as you are progressing through into the, the, the next part of the school year, any programs you want to highlight in your school district? I think, um, I think we're, we've really focused on our, our, our whole vision of our school district over the last several years has been creating a focused plan for each, and each individual student. And I think we've done an incredible job from junior high through senior year of creating different pathways for kids, whether it's a college pathway, whether it's a, a, a pathway in the business industry, whether it's a pathway in agriculture. And we've really, you know, as a small school, you can't offer everything in your school. So we've, I think, done a great job partnering with outside organizations. We've got our, our CEO group that's a, a huge business community group that I'm on that board. Lyft has been phenomenal for us in Mattoon nice. because as a small school we can offer, if a kid's going into leadership or business, we can offer some of those introductory course sequence, two or three, but then they can get the capstone program at Lyft where they're getting work experience and certifications and all those kinds of things. So. I think I'm, I'm really proud of the work we've done on getting kids focused on a career path. And, and we know it, it'll change, but we want to expose right. them to all right. these different career paths and you never know what, where it'll take them. And you know, one of the things we're looking at is kind of doing a culminating presentation for every senior at the end of the first semester where they actually have to present their post-career plan to our okay. a staff, a, kind of a staff panel and, and get approval and those kinds of things. So. Um, yeah, we're really pretty excited about the, the work we've done there. We had a nice run here on City Spotlight talking about the CEO program yeah. and, and all the opportunities for students in our area to get started on that, thinking about what's happening. It's, been, high it's been incredible. And what, what's, what, one of the things that's kind of new about, so our group has Sullivan and Arth Ala and um, Tuscola and us. And Douglas County. We, we've always employed a facilitator outside of the school and this is the first year that we actually have an Arcola High School business teacher okay teaching the CEO so a big chunk of her day and um, it, it's been it's been really good so far because it, she's just got a, a, a time there's some prep time built in that CEO program is so comprehensive so that's been a kind of a unique change for us but um, the, the businesses in Douglas County and in Sullivan have been incredible at supporting that program, and it's it's amazing. We're not just talking Arcola on this episode. No. We're talking about the general area as well. But the focus of this episode has been on Arcola. We've been talking Arcola schools with Dr. Tom Mulligan. Tom, great to have you on again here yeah, in thanks. Season 10. I mean, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. And that will do it for our latest City Spotlight on location episode on Arcola. Thanks for watching. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.